to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Back here, first things first, joined by former Pro Bowler Bart Scott. Good morning, Bart. Up, what it do? What it? Morning. What it's doing? What I it? Like, I like that velour right there. Thank you very Seasonally much. Seasonally appropriate, right? Yep. Seasonally yep. appropriate. See, that's right. how we do it. Gun show still out. There. <laughs> Gun show seasons, all of it, Bart. You bring so much. Now let's talk football. There we go. Uh, America's <laughs> game of the week. Packers coming out swinging in Dallas. Yesterday, midway through the first, Aaron Jones. How about Aaron Jones? Runs 18 yards to the end zone to put Grimby up 7-0. One of four touchdowns on the day for Jones. Pick this up in the fourth. 10-29 left. Dak trying to get the boys back in this. Oh, that's never going to help. Miscommunication. I like it. Tell day. them about it, too. Zagarius telling them about right there. it, too. Uh, fading hopes for Dallas as they were trailing by 10. Brett Maher with a 33-yarder. That is not good. That would have gotten them within a touchdown. Packers win. They improved to 4-1. and one. Here's Dak Prescott after losing back-to-back -back games. Well, we'll take this one on the chin. We're going to um, take the good, take the bad. We're going to learn from it. And um, hopefully we'll look back at this and say uh, this was a turning point or this was, a, this was good for us. Sure, we, we might we might have sniffed ourselves a little bit too much, and um, and that's why I say we'll take the, we take these last two games and especially this one and say hey, we, we probably needed that right. We probably needed that, and we're gonna get better because of it. That's why I said maybe we'll look back at this four or five games later, or how many ever games it is, and say uh, that was good for us because we became the team that we are now. And the men that we have in the locker room, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that's what we'll do. Do you believe Dak? You think Dak was a little too confident? You think this team came in sniffing themselves, if you will, walking out onto the field thinking they were better than they really were? What's that you got on? I got a little YSL on today. What's it? <laughs> it's called arrogance. Smell <laughs> 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 it. Absolutely. It's called I told you. Because I sat here early in the season, we were all talking about, oh, Dak Prescott, and we saw the start he got off to. Give him $40 million. He just put money in the bank. And I was one of them. I was one of them. Not, not the money amount, but, man, he had improved drastically. Yeah. Let's give him $35 million. I don't care. You did. Go ahead. Giants, Dolphins, Redskins. Now he's playing the varsity. Now what's happening when he's playing a quarterback that is equal or his superior on the other side? What happens when we see they, they take away you know, Zeke to 62 yards the last two weeks? Now it's in his hands, and he has to make decisions, smart decisions down the field, interceptions, you know, miscommunications with, with his receivers. You know, and you talk about this defense. This is the first time that I saw this defense you know, over-pursue. You have fast linebackers. What you have to have is you got to have disciplined linebackers that keep their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage so that when you have that wind back play, the old school Jamal Lewis, what we used to do when, mm -hmm. he, almost ran for, when he ran for 2,000 yards, you got to have linebackers that know how to fall back. And they're great on the outsides, but they're weak up the middle. And they exploited that, you know, they exploited that part of their defense. And I don't want to hear anything about Tyron Smith being hurt because I look over up into, you know, New England, the Providence area, and I know that they're missing three of their best offensive linemen, but elite quarterbacks can patch up those holes, right? And Dak Prescott is not a, he's a good quarterback. He's not great. And he's, he's damn sure not special. Right, and you know, when I said they made the comparison that I'll go get Teddy Bridgewater, well, a couple of weeks into his starting th week three, you see what he looks like when he starts to push the ball down the field. This is a team that you know Garrett doesn't have an extension, you know, so he's he's coaching scared. Ooh, man, he, right? And he, okay, you know, and Jason, I'm good is, is Jared, for Jason Garrett. What is what happens when you get me Monday, man? When I'm rested, <laughs> give me more on Monday. I bring the hot fire, spit some hot lava for you. Go on with your. But you, you, but you, but you got you know Jared that's coaching scared. Right? And you think maybe mm -hmm. Austin is, is, is breathing down his back, you know, another young, you know, first time, you know, coaching candidate. Wow. And we're, okay. saying, we're saying that this team, and listen, this is your best chance. Because once you play Dak, then you're going to lose a, 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 a your, your one top of, corner. You might have to move on from one of the offensive linemen. Well, you shouldn't have gave Sean Lee the money anyway because you felt good because it was, it was one of, like, my homeboys, you know, mm -hmm. circle of trust. You should have let him go. You could have got a little bit more help. But All right, so to put some numbers with, the truth that you're spitting right now. The Dallas Cowboys, since Zeke's been there, if he doesn't go for 75 yards, they're one and eight. So I know some people are gonna look at Zeke and say, last two games, that's why you don't pay a running back. No, last two games are why you paid Zeke. Because without him, you are a very beatable football team. The last two games, he hasn't played like himself. He needs to play better than he's played the last couple of weeks. 12 carries, though. But you're right, yesterday they got forced out Down of their running game. 31 run. to three. They got forced out of the running game. Dak Prescott, the first three games against what you called the junior varsity. The Giants, 
Dolphins and Washington. A 128 rating, nine touchdowns, two picks, and is on everyone's MVP leaderboard. The last two games, a 78 rating, down 50 points, two touchdowns, and most importantly, four interceptions. The Dallas Cowboys, over the last three plus years, have a spectacular record. I apologize, I don't have it right in front of me. When Dak simply plays a clean game. They win over 90% of their games when Dak simply doesn't turn the ball over because they have very good offensive line. Typically, it was banged up yesterday. They have a good defense. They have a great running back. And I understand that all those picks were not on Dak, but we can't say none of them were on him. And he got away with one that was called back yeah. because of illegal contact down or illegal hands to the face on the defense. This was the most concerning part to me, C, and you keyed on this earlier, was when Dak said we, maybe we were sniffing ourselves. They're just coming off a loss. <laughs> they just were coming off right. a game where they scored 10 points and lost to a backup quarterback, even if it's a really good one, Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. I don't know. Well, if, they, if he just said that after the New Orleans game, I'd have gotten it. Because three games, they had dominated all three, right? But they should have already had their wake-up call. And so I don't think the Cowboys are as bad as they looked in the first three quarters yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they're as good as they looked the first three games of the season. One thing that you guys didn't bring up, I think you guys are missing. You guys said that the score was out of hand. You guys went to when the lead was at its biggest, 31 to three. But it's really 17 to nothing. At halftime, yeah. when you go in at halftime yeah. and you got a running back like Zeke, we're only down by 17 points. Oh, the running game is not gone. Yep. So for me, it's also sure. that offensive line is not dominant. Because that running game was not taken away from them. At that point, you can still run the yep. football. But they do have some problems. And one thing that Dak was saying, that I know this, because I got a lot of good friends. Emma Smith's still a good friend of mine. I'm in communication with him. Troy Aikman's a friend of mine. Michael Irvin's a friend of mine. And there's a reason why all of them live in Dallas. Because the people love them. But when he says that we were smelling ourselves, I don't believe it's in the building. I believe that's just living in Dallas, yep. walking around Dallas, and what people are saying to them, and they're still a young football team. So Dak, I, I'm listening to you in the press conference. That's the only way, Jenna, a young team like that, given they had just lost to New Orleans, only scored 10 points, could even be like, we're smelling us. For him to say that, it wasn't like someone said that and, and forced him into saying that. No, he came up with that that maybe we were too overconfident. Well, you saw they came out slow. They came out what looked to be uninspired against a very hyped matchup. I mean, this was the game of the week. It was a four, one of two four o'clock game. And this, this was a really big game. This is, and they just didn't come out as if they were ready to play. And this well, is this is how fragile things are. Because Dallas did drive the football. They got a three and out and they drove football first. Yeah, and, and then, then Amari turns it, over, turns it over. And that was it. And, and then, then they were but, deflated. But that energy, when they turned that football over and Green Bay went back the other way, it ignited Green Bay. And Green Bay could be patient as far as, okay, what's our game plan? And they went about trying to d duplicate what they had, what they thought they were going to do before the game. So, so who's the real Cowboys team? Is it the team that you saw in the first couple of weeks? Or is it the team when they're not playing, when they are playing? quality opponents is that the team it's somewhere in the middle right it's, it's never as bad or as good as we think it is it's somewhere in the middle but I think this is more also about the improvements that the Packers have made because if if, if Adams don't go out the you know last week with the toe then they 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 they, they beat the Eagles Right, so this is more about the improvements and the commitment to excellence and trying to really win a Super Bowl while they have a great quarterback more than anything. The only thing that the Green Bay Packers is missing is a dominant nose guard that'll keep these linebackers clean. But they're only going to continue to get better. Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers is only going to get more comfortable with his offense and figure out what works. You know, so this is more about, I feel, Green Bay and where they're going to be. I think they're going to be one of the finalists, you know, when it comes to, to trying to be in the NFC Championship slash the Super Bowl. And, and one other thing, uh, as there's been a constant theme for Dallas over the last few years, they do not have an answer when they don't have Tyron Smith. Once again, their left tackle is out, and once again, the offense struggles mightily. I understand he is a great player, and at one point, he was probably the best left tackle in football, and He's still has the ability anyway. to get up to that level. But Tyron Smith is not Joe Thomas. He is a guy who's going to miss time, and when he is out there, they're just like the numbers fall off a cliff when Zeke doesn't play well. The numbers fall off a cliff when Tyron Smith either isn't healthy or he's not in the or he doesn't play as happened yesterday, and then is added 
injury to insult, if you will. They lost their right tackle during the game as well, and they had no answer. We'll start calling you Rain, man. You got all of them stats. Appreciate man. you. Bro. Have you seen the show? Yeah. This is his beat. Got to take a break. He's resting this Monday. Mm. Coming up, Jack how did the do, baby. Around Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs? That's next on First Things First. Let's see if he has some Rain Man about Kansas City. And did you? Oh, you're did you know, you